Welcome to another episode of Lifelong Learner. This is the Out of Class Edition with Ben, Janesh, and Matt. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Lifelong Learner. Welcome, Matt. Welcome, Ben. How are we doing, fellas? Hey, boys. Good to see you. So hey. organized this morning, everybody. Oh, in the new house, Matty. In the new house. I'm in the new house. Which is exciting. It but is exciting. It does look like a, for the viewers, it does look like it's an exact Zoom background. I feel like Zoom's got that exact image. I know you're moving it so you're showing that it doesn't shimmer, but uh, I like it. It's, I like it. It's not, not a hologram. Yeah, it's pretty cute. There's my window looks into it. You probably can't see that. There's big, beautiful, I don't know what they're called, elephant leaves. Elephant leaf? Oh, God, she's wrecking something. Lily. Sure. Lily. Oh, so this this podcast could go south. But hey, um, Maddie, tell me, like, two weeks ago, you were going to mm. sacrifice a chicken. Oh, yes. How did the gift slash bribe go? Today. Today? Today. What? Yeah. Hang on. It was two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Indonesia, lads. Nothing happens when you plan. We ran into a few challenges, and so now we're re-pivoting. So is it going to be today? I hope so. I hope so. So what's, oh. what's happened? He didn't get a big enough chicken. No. Oh, without giving away too many details, we're dividing the project, project up into different phases, and we're now trying to streamline so we can get a lot done without it getting confusing for the boys. Um, and so that requires just, there's so many teams. So the, the land development, which is my phase one and their idea of phase one were very different. Mm. And so after many, many meetings, we've got clear because like what I want to do is just build the retaining walls, build the boundary and lift so we need a meter to a meter point five of fill over the whole project. And I just want simple access. They're like, well, if we're going to do that, then we might as well do the foundations for the front building. Cause then we don't have to go back and dig again. And if we're going to do that, then we might as well um, do the form work for the pool. And so what they're doing is gradually adding on, adding, they're adding on. And so I've had to have conversations with them and say, all I want is this, but they're like, you're going to end up doing extra work. I know. But if this goes really well, then I'm going to take you for the whole thing. I'm trying to break it up so that I'm not hanging myself out to dry if things don't go to plan. So mm -hmm. I put pause on it and then it's like six meetings for one, you know, normal meeting, I guess, mm. language barrier. I guess they might have been trying to save your chickens because I suppose each stage is another chicken. <laughs> is it each stage another that. chicken? It's one chicken. <laughs> one chicken for the whole thing. That but doesn't maybe. seem like enough. Well, if it is a chicken per phase, that's the way I want to do it. <laughs> oh, mate, well, that's exciting. So, Because so, uh, last time we spoke, there was a chicken getting sacrificed and then there were going to be – there was work starting. Yeah. So, oh, the work the work started. Oh. They just haven't started. Um, you haven't got permission for it yet. No, we've got permission. We just haven't started um, building. Oh, yeah, so but you're breaking ground, though. We're breaking ground. Yep. It's all clean now. I'll send you guys the drone footage. You can see the land clean. Nice. They've already built the temporary fence. So I've got them ticking over. I'm just trying to get it really clear so we can get an easy win in two months. And I can be like, boom, here it is. And I could give this to anyone. You know, if I, mm. if I pick a builder, they're going to go, yep, we can work with this. Or if we go with these guys... Yep, we can work with it. Mm -hmm. So that's the current plan based on, yeah, what I've been told is a good strategy. Don't paint yourself into a corner and then, you know. Mm. So feels you good. Lots of places that have got empty swimming pools and, <laughs> yeah. you know, foundations sticking out of the ground and that's it. There's and heaps, there's actually. There's heaps. It's, uh, there's a lot of projects that get built and fall down. Like, that's been bringing me a lot of anxiety. There's this one on the on a hill where my old house is, and the retaining wall would have been 50 meters tight, and it rained. And the next day, I went past, and there's just rubble. 
There's no wall. And the house is like maybe two metres from the edge of the retaining wall. So it's just this beautiful house perched on a cliff. And I was driving past, I said to Kat, see, wouldn't you prefer be on the flat and have to add land rather than be wedged <laughs> on a cliff and have it maybe just fall off? She's like, I'd probably prefer to neither, to be honest. Okay. Wow. Oh, well, that's exciting. Mm. Really exciting. You know, that's- just what came to mind was a boys' trip. Janesh, me and Rhino come across, mm. do like a four-day weekend would be fun and come and check it out and hang mm. out. That, oh, that would be awesome. So cool. Yeah. I good. wish you'd come last weekend because the big one's been the moving into this house. That's just been the game changer for Kat. That's been my number one focus. I was saying to Janesh, it was like it, it, how we would do things. It was turbo. Like I was with Bobby sanding for like four hours and then the sandpaper hadn't even left the wood before we started lacquering, like just trying to get the furniture done so I could move it into the house because Kat had her first shift. And we were late, but we were only late by like a day, which by Indonesian standards, that's world class. <laughs> but it was so late, like late hours. And Bobby, I don't know many people who have that work ethic and it's quite easy to burn people out. Like we've, we've experienced that at the mm. summit where you, you just go so hard and you're so driven to get the goal. Some people just don't have the stamina and you can, yeah, it can hurt relationships. Bob is one of those guys who's like, if you need something done, just, I can do it. Zero complaints. Just sanding. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. No, mm. So it was really cool. Highs and lows. We're really worn out. Haven't slept. But we moved into a new house and we've started something on the land. So yeah, nice. feeling really good at this end. Oh, that's How awesome. about you? How's the, how's how's the, the foot? foot? How are you doing? Mate, Maybe I want to know. First and I want to know the foot, you. mate, because um, the listeners that uh, – uh, that before air, Ben was, uh, I'm not sure if it was you were just frantic looking for your laptop or you were hobbling or a bit of both. There was a bit of like, I was getting a bit seasick with your, with your, you holding your phone, mate. So what is the, what's the update with the foot? Well, mate, it's healing up. So I'm two and a half weeks in and I'm yep. sure I mean, it must be healing. Like, unless I don't have any healing abilities left in my body. But so uh, it's healing up, I'm sure. I've just been, been out with a mate early morning. Uh, I did have a little bit of oh, yeah. one of those touch up this morning. Shot. Yeah, so icy. Oh no! A bit of a ramp, and the crutch just went. Oh, You're a crutch expert. How that crutch happen, expert. Man? You know that I've been hearing that comment this last week. They go, "Geez, you get around well on the crutches." It's like it's because I'm an expert because it's the second time in six months I've been on crutches. But um, apart from the little this morning, uh, it's been good. Um, mm. It's been, Did you catch yourself? Sorry, when you no, you, I went down like a sack of oh, oh, sack of potatoes. Um, oh. It's one of those falls, you know, when you have those ones, and they're sort of a bit embarrassing. So even though you're a bit stunned, and you, you just, just can get up, get up, and everyone, and everyone goes, "Mate, you're right." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no yeah, worries. Yeah, yeah. It happens all the time. What are you doing? Well, <laughs> it's like I'm sitting there going, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, mate." Uh, and uh, but I think fun. I think I'm pretty sure it's fine. Pretty sure it's fine. So no, mm. healing up, healing up. Um, got a holiday in a week and a half up north, sunshine. So uh, my plan is that I'm going to be walkable in another week and a half. Nice, but, it, but not- oh, walkable without a crutch. Oh, what do you mean? Correct. Yeah, cool, gotcha. Be- beachside um, holiday. Yeah, Palm Cove. Mm. North of Cairns. Mm. Vitamin D, some sea oh, salt. Oof. Correct. Oh, very nice. And how long are you up there for? So, for all our listeners in America, jellyfish, crocodiles, sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got crutches. You got crutches, mate. Yeah. You can just bat them off. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, so that's good. What about you, Jake? What's going oh, on? Uh, what's going on? We are... Uh, we've been looking at a little bit of. Uh, there's been a project in the in the back end that we're trying to. Um, a group of a group of friends, we're trying to start a. Like a uh, just a Airbnb, uh, place, and in the last two weeks, I think I've gone and seen three properties, that just kind of fallen in. Like a, a project that we all met like a year ago. The idea was floated, we ran numbers, and then just everyone's in their own, got their own businesses going, right? So it's like, 
it's busy. Life is busy and it got put on ice. And then someone kind of stoked a fire. One of the guys sends a message. He goes, hey, look, I may have some free land. So that changes everything. Um, yeah. So we've been uh, – one, uh, one landowner goes, look, I've got a bunch of land and I'm not doing anything with it. Like if you guys want it, it's yours. Like you can lease it um, for pretty much next to nothing. I guess it's just sitting there. Uh, like rural property so that's been getting a bit of traction in the last yeah last two weeks probably looked at all three of them um, did some so work. this is land that you build a house on or? yeah it'll be just a tiny home a tiny home and rent it yeah. out and then rent it out so it's been they're going crazy mate. my daughter just she wanted to get away this weekend mm. and went looking and like there's just there was nothing under Almost two hundred bucks a night, mate. The average is between two fifty and six hundred dollars a night for a tiny thing. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's fascinating. Even even through the winter periods, right? So, yeah, so that's been that's been interesting. It's got like some traction on it at the moment. So, it's uh, yeah, it's one of those things where you go, oh look, this is just landed in our lap. What do you do with it? Do you just and so I was like, well, I'll go, I'll go see it. They're closer to me than the other guys. So I was in the car and looking at it and um, yeah, working out which one and uh, and now it's just uh, talking to the landowner and going, look, can we get an agreement in place and then it's get get things in. So we're hoping if this agreement comes in, like it will be where we're in May now or hopefully August, there'll be something on the market. If uh, if this land goes through August, they'll be be up and rentable. Very cool. So, and what's the land like? Uh, one of them's one of them's got an epic view, but it's like on the side of a sloping cliff. Um, so there's a lot of earthwork to be done. Um, and then the other one, other two are actually. Um, farm but it's like sweeping gully so you're like you're at the top of a of a mound and you're looking into like the valley of like mm. these things so um both beautiful um the latter's probably less land work um on it so I and if you have run the numbers clearing land putting driveway in yeah power, so the, the other solar. the other one's um more expensive um the other one uh, oh, for the land work like about 20 or 30k more land work roughly so mm. this one's an easier scratch put rock in done put a fence in we're gonna put a fence in because there's cows next door but so yeah so it's in- interesting so that's been got a little bit more traction and on the group chat every day it's like, all right what's the next step what's the next step and you got one guy getting quotes on builds and uh, and he's a sparky as well, so he's like looking at the the solar generator and all of that bits and pieces. And so yeah, it's interesting. It's kind of just got legs like all of a sudden uh, again. Mm-hmm. Like it was dormant, and then it's like okay, hold on, let's just let's move a little bit quicker on it. So which has been interesting. So that's been good. It's yeah. Yeah. The spark. Oh, Very yeah. good. Really mm. good. Hey, that, um, we- oh, I'm sorry. Go Ben. You got Sorry. I was just going to say, how many of you were on that? Is that Friends from school or is that work colleagues? What, yeah, great the... question. Uh, the friends from uh, a business club that I'm a part of. And yeah. so it was five, uh, five including me. And then these recent conversations has been with me uh, with two. So it's like we're going to, yeah, it's like, and we'll still go through the group, through the group, but it may be a time where the group goes, look, you know what? Yep, I just don't have the time for it, which is fair enough because I think it's, like it's a it's a fair call to get people go like I don't have the time or the energy to put put to it. Uh, you guys run with it, so um, mm. yeah. So five five and three. Mm, that's good, mate. Mm. Is, uh, just you know, you're talking about your projects, and Maddie's got you know his project, and your project, Janesh, is is built around you also working and living in Australia and. And that kind of energy and vibe. And Maddie, you've got your project and living in Lombok, which has a different energy and vibe. Mm. Uh, what? What's the? Um, what's the pressure? Would you compare the pressure or the stress 
for the want of a better term, I don't want to, I don't hate using that word loosely, that's associated with what you're doing. Uh, and and I, I heard someone talking about this yesterday. I think it's Mo someone. He was part of, he was ex Google X, mm. ex Google X. Um, and he was talking about that stress is, um, like from a from a, a, a physics perspective, is the load being applied to the square surface area of the object, right? And so if you've got a small surface area of the object and a massive load, let's say 100 as the units of load, then there's a lot of stress on that object. But the, the more surface area of the object and the load is being applied to that surface area, the less stress. And in my mind, that surface area is our flexibility. It's our knowledge. It's our life experience. Mm -hmm. And so the, the broader we become in our flexibility and life experience, the less stress we actually feel because it's being spread across a broader load. Does that make sense? Mm. He also talked about the frequency of the stress and how much gap we have between these stress episodes that eventually influences whether the stress breaks us or whether we get stronger. And so I'm curious for your lifestyle, Janesh, mm. versus your lifestyle, Matty. You know, you did a little pan around before when there were four surfboards, which means you've obviously got a lot of time to surf because <laughs> most of us only have one surfboard. And <laughs> so um, you can, or you're really skilled and you can do a few at the same time. Um, you can you can tell when someone doesn't surf because they all say that. It's yeah. like golf. You have a well, surfboard some... for each each hole, you know. <laughs> you have 14 clubs. You have a surfboard for each wave. But anyway, carry on. You, so, um, great, great lady. so I'm curious, like, just, you know, the comparison between the two, I wonder what the stress is like. You guys are the same age. And you are different personalities. But for you, Maddie, how how is it living in Lombok and building a resort? How yeah. are the stress levels? And do you find that there is that there's a good balance there for you? Or what are you noticing? Well, I'm noticing that I have zero skill in everything that I'm doing. So that's stressful, right? You don't have the breadth. Yeah, I, I don't build. So I'm learning drawings. There's so much learning, so much uncertainty, right? So I've got no building experience. Uh, I don't speak the language. Um, what else? There's other things. They're two big ones, right? Like communication in any project is key. We know when you have a team of people, even if you speak the same language, communication is the probably the thing that's going to break you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we I meet with someone who speaks broken English who meets with someone who speaks Bahasa. I sit in these meetings and I'm watching body language and trying to work out whether someone is honest based on how many times they blink, you know, and how their bodies move. So in one regard, fucking stressful, right? I'm putting everything online and I know that I'm completely outside my skill set. It's like a boat. It's like being in a teacup in the middle of the ocean and I've lost sight of land. And all I know is that if I keep going this way, keep believing, keep trying my best, keep treating people well, hopefully I'm going to see something that resembles land and then just with sheer willpower, I'll paddle my way over there. And once I'm on land, I'm a land creature. I'll be fine. That's my strategy at the moment. <laughs> but one thing that does help is stress management and reduction of stress. So I've got good strategies. So I get stressed, but then I'll breathe or I get stressed and then I'll surf or I get stressed and then I'll go skate. Or I get stressed. I, I know how to relieve stress, which is helpful. And I've got a wicked relationships i've got a really good friend who i 100 percent trust i never question whether or not he's gonna fuck me over um and i have a really great partner too who i trust as well and we don't have much stress in our relationship she's got my back 99 percent of the time if there is a challenge we can talk about it we have great communication which again is really really helpful so i think they're the pillars right i've got me and some skill but it's not applicable to this situation, but there's still life experience. There's 
are the skills that help bear some of the weight. There's a, a pretty good belief in myself, a great relationship with a, um, my partner, who's she's incredible, and yeah, friendship and stress management. That's how I'm doing it. But dude, i yeah, I get so stressed. <laughs> what does that look like? I'm curious. What does that? Fit? What are the symptoms of you being stressed? I've never uh, seen you stressed. For me, worry is how stress mm. um, comes out. I go so far into the future that, and it's worry and it's fear and it's what if, what if, what if. But I've spent so many years working on that and coming up with really great strategies that, uh, and that's what I teach. Like I love teaching that because it was, when I was younger, it was such a horrific experience. Like I was just a mess. And then I worked my way into this place of calm and people say that. They're like, dude, you're so calm. You're so chill. You don't worry about anything. Um, yeah, I still do, but I just have great strategies and rules now. I'm like, what? Don't worry about something that you can't control is one of the big ones. Um, but yeah, worry is how it, it uh, manifests. And oh, it's debilitating, right? Like, I sit in front of so much information. And this is one of the biggest challenges with Kat is she loves information. The more information, the more certainty. For me, too much information, paralysis. I go into fear. I'm like, oh, my God, because it hinges on 45,000 things. And if that thing doesn't work, like, so for me, faith. This is more. That's, yeah, that's where my, um, my calmness comes from, faith. I'm just like, fuck it. It'll work out. And as long as I have enough information to take the next step, fuck, don't worry about the other 5,000 steps, just one step at a time. Mm. How about you, G? Mm. Share some wisdom, man. I need some more. How do you go with that? I, uh, yeah, I think the breath part of it for me is uh, in different avenues. So if you think of like, say, you're saying that analogy, Ben, you're saying stress is coming down, like, and say if it's like a, I think of like a stamp coming down, right? But if you go, look, there's multiple stamps, but then you go, look, coming down for different areas of your world, but like I try to not ideally, but go the pressure of all of them. Like ideally, they're not the same pressure. Like they're all coming down at different times, but they're coming down. But they've got enough things happening in your world to to counteract them. And I, I know I cause the stress because I I like it too. Like I think um, I've been. You and I were talking last week, and I said, "Oh, look them." Uh, I've taken the day, catching up with friends, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You're like, and it was a lot, but it's also, uh, it fills a cup too. So it causes stress, but it also creates breath as well. So it's an interesting, it causes stress on, say, one side. If you did that all the time, it would counteract the breath. But however, you do it in certain times, you go, you know what, I need this time with friends. I need this time kind of by myself and it might cause a little bit of, say, family time stress, but it co- it creates breath as well. So if you did that all the time, then it's obviously at the cost of something else, right? But it's that, that balance of going, how do you, for me, it's how do you keep them, keep the cost low and the st- stress is good, I think. I like the stress and I like... If one thing is a stressor, so to speak, um, it's like I like multiple, if that makes sense, multiple avenues of it. So then it's like, oh, it's almost, that's not bad. It's just the way it is. And if you want to grow, I think this year has been a fast year so far. Like we're already in May and it's been fast year, um, but feels like things are good. Like uh, there's times where it's been a there's this time of the year and it's been stressful but and not good like like a stress stressful meaning like oh this this really sucks uh but now there's like well there's a lot of stresses but it doesn't feel uh stressful Mm. there's a lot of pressure let's just take the word stress out of it so a lot of pressure uh but not stressful Mm. like then i don't think pressure is good i think pressure is good as long as you're doing the work around it and you want it 
So sometimes you don't want it. So you might win. So we're in a big delivery phase in the coaching practice at the moment. And it's like, yeah, well, Janice, you, you worked on this last year. Now it's time to deliver, right? That, that pressure that you asked for it uh, and you have to deliver now. And it's okay. Like you got, you got to be care, careful what you wish for. And so I think it's, but you got to count it actually. Like I'm probably now more diligent with my water, um, with walking, with like, moving my body uh, more so now and I can take on more. It's like that breath. As Matt was saying, like the, the strategies with it creates for me the breath um, and it allows me to go, oh, look, little little pressure here and a little pressure there and I go, oh, but I'm doing other things to, to, to um, create that breath, to spread the surface area. So that's probably me in a nutshell. What, what's your go-to? Do you think, too, that the environment makes a difference? Like, you know, Lombok, mate, we'll get it done when we get it done. Does that create more stress or does that create less stress versus living in Australia, mate, everyone's connected, phones ringing, messages getting texted, you know, emails coming through. Is there Does environment make a difference, do you think? Do you notice that, Maddie, when you're back in Australia? Like, if you're trying to do that project and live in Australia versus if you're trying to do that project in Lombok, is one better or the other? I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Like, what you, how does um, it? Well, if I was doing it in Australia, this is what comes out easy compared because we get what you pay for. You know what I mean? You everything's regulated. I give half a million dollars to someone. They say they're going to build something. I know they're going to. Well, you don't. I mean, you don't. You don't. Wherever you go, but that's the feeling, right? Mm-hmm. There's more regulation there's more accountability things happen when they say you know on average i would say if you arrange a meeting with someone in melbourne they're going to be there on time or early if they're a professional it's just not that way here like so does that cause more stress it depends who you are right like Mm. if you swim against the river and you try to bring your culture here you're fucked Get chewed up and spat out. I watch people just, oh, why is this fucking happening? And, this, you know, once you go into that fear cycle, you make assumptions mm. and none of them are good. You don't expect the best of people. You assume they're ripping you off. You assume that they're assholes. You assume that they don't respect you. That's why they were late. I've watched having to so many people. Um, so, but it's work, right? Because I've been programmed. Like my dad's a businessman from, you know, Australia from in the past, you know, you, if you're, if you're late, if you're not early, you're late, you know, you, you say you're going to do something, you do it and you do it well, you know, if you're going to do something, you do it right the first time. Like all these rules that are ingrained in me um, are in conflict here, right? Like, so mm. that, that's, that's stressful. It's like, I have a belief that if you're going to do something, you do it right the first time. They don't. They take the, they, they do it quickly, you know, and it breaks. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of letting, a lot of letting go, letting go of our old ideas of some that I really liked, like some of dad's philosophies that are part of, you know, my belief system. Now I'm like, I really wish that it was like that, but it isn't. And so, yeah, letting go. Fuck, that's the big thing here. It's like, just let, let go like dig in where you need to like certain things I'm just not going to budge on, but I've got to let go and, and really prioritize relationships in instead. Sometimes that's the, that's the struggle. That's the challenge. It's like, I don't want to build, I'm trying to build a business here, but also a life here. Like I want to be here. And if I burn the community building something, then I can't run it because everyone's like, he's a fucking asshole. Like, why do we want to work for that guy? He's cheap. He works his way harder than everyone else, you know. So it's, dude, it's so much. Mm. What about you, Ben? But, How do you create your the the breadth and the flexibility, except for ducking off to Palm Cove? Mm. That must be um, one of the strategies. It's a great strategy. I think- and I have I have another question after I want to ask you too. I'm conscious of time. We got, we've got we've got a short episode. This we do have a short episode today. So, um, I think 
I, I think the dose is the poison, you know, which is what Janesh was basically saying is the dose is the poison, you know, that we need a level of stress in our system. It makes us stronger. Uh, it, it builds breadth over time. You know, the key to more certainty is uncertainty. Because the more uncertainty you experience, the more certainty grows. And it just doesn't grow in one area. It grows in multiple areas. So I think the dose is the poison. But when the stress is chronic, when that there isn't a break between it, um, when it's more than you can bear, obviously things start to break. Um, I, I probably a little bit like Janesh, I kind of like a, a, a sort of slightly higher dose of stress and, and I, it feels good. And I would say most of the times people can look at my world and go, mate, you must be stressed. Well, I'm not. Actually, I don't find it stressful at all. But there are some things that I do find stressful. And one of my strategies is, um, I don't know about you guys, but at the end of the day, it's always tougher. It's always darker. You know, the nights are always darker. And... What I do trust in is that, yes, it is going to get dark, but tomorrow morning the sun will come up, do you know, and it's brighter the next day. And I think that's a that's been a really key thing that I've carried for a lot of years is the next morning will be better. And I think that was mum something that mum always used to say, you know, I, I can't think quite what the saying is, but, you know, tomorrow it'll things will look better. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I think... I think that's, you know, when you get into that worry state and probably when my stress builds, I, it, it quickly just sort of crosses over into a worry kind of mm. anxious sort of state. Mm. So it builds and builds and it feel, all feels good and then something could put me into a worry state and I'll go to bed doing the worry thing and then in the morning I wake up and I'm all action. I kind of know what I need to do uh, and the sun is shining if you live in Queensland, <laughs> although it is in Victoria today. It is. Um, we just thought like, this whole week hasn't you know, been. And you know, get get things get things sorted. So mm -hmm. I think the whole idea, where am I going with all that? This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, having that as a belief, this too shall pass. Um mm -hmm. and I think too that whole, you know, philosophy around impermanence that the good times won't last. Mm. Mm. Good times won't last, mm. and, but the good news is the bad times won't last. Mm. Yeah, it's so and true. it's part of being human, you know. It's um, you know, it's the it's the strong winds that make the street the tree stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the it's the droughts that make the tree stronger. Uh, mm. Too much drought though kills the tree. Too much wind, the tree snaps. But it's that fine wind, line, right? It's that fine yeah. line. The dose is the poison. The dose is the poison. Mm. So, um, mm. Yeah. What's hey, that? I'm conscious of the time, guys. We yeah. want to do a run. Yeah. What's our one-liner takeaway, fellas? Ready? Um, yeah, I was really feeling what you were saying there about the sun rising the next day. Like, so, and, yeah, I had a similar process. Had some information come my way and I felt the fear and I felt myself go, oh, no. And... And that was my strategy. It was breathe and just look at this again tomorrow and see how, how it feels. Because, you know, once that emotion gets activated, you don't think clearly. It's not rational. It's, it just so quickly becomes a mountain. So that was really, um, yeah, it was really helpful for me. So I'm trying to think what was the way that I framed it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, um, you know, when you were uh, younger maybe and you had a group of lads, you have your boy, your friends who are lads and they're, they're dickheads and you, you have a can of Coke or something and one of your mates will shake it up and then you don't know and you go to open it and you get Coke all over yourself. Do you remember those times? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if that happened to you enough times, you learn – to whenever your mate was like, yeah, have a can of Coke, you learn to not open it straight away or to tap it and then open it and it wouldn't go all over you. Did you ever, Ben's looking no, surprised. No, you didn't have the tap I strategy? Reckon, I think that's just a lifestyle. I think that's an old lifestyle. 
Well, I, I think of it as a Coke can moment. So when things Coke hit you and you're like overwhelmed, you're about to explode, just take a moment. And tap the can. Breathe. Just take a moment because if you, yeah, if you open up when you're highly stressed, you're emotional, it, the damage that's going to be done will be irreparable. You'll also feel guilt and shame afterwards once the emotion dies down and you realize that actually it was a miscommunication or you've made an assumption. Uh, and that literally happened to me yesterday. And I'm so grateful that I made the right choice because I then later had a meeting and I was like, oh, it's just a misunderstanding. It wasn't that at all. And I was just so driving home grateful. I'm like, oh, I just dodged a bullet there. So it's the same philosophy as you, I think, that know that it will get better. This will pass um, and allow allow that to happen. And you got to trust. Trust that it will get better. So, yeah, Coke can moment. Take, mm. take a moment when it really hits you, that stress, and you feel overwhelmed. Mm. What about awesome. you, Ben? Um, no, it's your turn. No, 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 no. <laughs> I asked first. Uh, uh, I think um, it was it was something that Maddie said about um, oh, right, it's just escaped me. But there was something there about. Oh, just not don't swim against the tide. Mm. You know, like get get in the current and use it to your advantage. You know, which is what they talk about, Matty, as you know, being a surfer. You know, when you're down at a surf beach, if you get caught in the rip, don't fight against it. Go with the rip. It'll take you out and then it'll bring you back in again. And I think sometimes, you know, we we push with our agenda. We keep going with our agenda and it sometimes it's against the tide. And it just creates a lot of pain for us and the people around us. So, so to actually find where the current's going, use it to our advantage. That was my take home. Mm. No. I would say, I think similar to what you said, Ben, earlier was the dose of the poison is, I think, uh, take stock of what your relationship is to stress and pressure and go... And is it the cost? I think we I talked about it earlier this year on an episode. Go, is it the necessary cost? Uh, and and do you want to pay it? Because you, if you're going somewhere, you're growing. Would it, there is a cost on it, and it may be this pressure. And go, like as you're saying that the tree's not going to get get stronger without wind, without some strong wind. And if you mm. don't want, if the tree doesn't want to get stronger, then it shouldn't have the wind, right? So I think it's that. Reevaluate. I think the relationship to to stress or pressure or whatever you may call it, and it's not always not always bad. Mm. Uh, I have one more thing that you said, Janesh, that I want to throw back because I think it's um, helpful. You also said that it um, make sure it's something you want because mm. sometimes we put all this stress on ourselves and it's not even something we want. If we're honest, it's something Mum wants or Dad wants or your brother wants for you or it's not fucking worth it if you don't want it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why are you putting yourself under that much stress and pressure for what? If it's not what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Good stuff, lads. Oh. Good session today. Yeah. Well, great like episode. It. Thanks, listeners. Yeah. And uh, till next time, we'll, we'll see you later. Yeah. Thanks for listening to another episode of Lifelong Learner. If you like this episode and want to know more and hear other episodes, head over to lifelonglearnerpodcast.com where you can subscribe to our newsletter where you'll be the first to know when new podcast episodes come out. And if you want to say hello, tell us a joke or ask us a question, send us an email at hello at lifelonglearnerpodcast.com. Thanks again.